10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! It's the award-winning radio program. We are ready to start. Hi all, welcome to A Voice in the Desert. It's a pleasure to have you join us today in sharing God's word with you. It's our sincerest desire that today's message will uplift you, strengthen your faith and guide you in your walk with Jesus Christ. And now we leave you with our host in today's message. Hi, my dear brethren. Welcome to A Voice in the Desert. Great to be with you as always as we speak about the Word of God. You know, Lately, looking around the world and seeing how much turmoil there is and knowing that most of our listeners, okay, worldwide are from more or less the Middle East, you know, I would like to get these messages more often to you. And if there's anything special that you're looking to listen to or learn about, please feel free to write to us. Okay, via our Facebook page of Voice in the Desert 2017 on Facebook. Um, and we gladly get back to you and tell you what's going on because what's happening in the world right now, not a lot of people know what's going on. And those that think they know what's going on really do not know what's going on. The only one that knows is the true living God and that is Jesus Christ. This is who I want you to know. That's why we exist at A Voice in the Desert. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's why we exist at A Voice in the Desert. We exist here to take the word of Christ around the world and let people know who he is. So it is my earnest prayer that we're going to do right now before we go into the message is Father God, I want to thank you, Lord, for allowing me to use this medium to do your great commission, which is to get your word to the ends of the earth. I thank you, Father, for all those that are listening to your messages, to your word. That's correct, because I'm only an oracle. I'm only a vessel. It is the spirit within me that tells me what to speak, what comes from you, my dear Lord God. Help me to show the people who you really are, that you are a true, loving, and trusting God, and that the only road to salvation is through Jesus Christ. I want to thank you very much, Lord, for giving me this honor and privilege of learning your word, having intimacy with your word, being educated in your word, and growing in your footsteps, following them. Though I will never be perfect, each day I get a little bit closer until your second coming. I pray for all those around the world that are listening to us, I pray that the Holy Spirit puts a holy anointing upon you as he did upon the first primitive church. The way the Holy Spirit came upon every person in that upper room waiting for the power of God from on high to come upon them just as was foretold by Jesus Christ. I pray that the Holy Spirit enables you fires you up and fills you with his anointing power and knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. He is your salvation from damnation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So the message for today is, uh, is titled, How Can I Find Jesus Christ? It's a perfect topic for what we're talking about because we're talking to a lot of people from around, a lot, a lot of different places from around the world that have different beliefs 
and really haven't gotten to know anything else other than what's in the environment or in their culture, okay? But we're here today as a voice in the desert to take to you the one and only true word of the true living God, Jesus Christ. And the message of today is, how can I find Jesus Christ? So how does the Spirit draw us to Jesus? How does he do it? Even more deeply, why is it necessary for the Spirit to draw us to him? Couldn't we just choose Jesus on our own volition? Paul comments to the Thessalonian church, give us a short answer for how the Spirit draws us towards Jesus. Speaking of his, of his experience with the Thessalonians, Paul says, for we know brothers and sisters loved by God that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words but also with power with the holy spirit and deep convictions this you will find it in first thessalonians chapter 1 verses 4 through 5. the spirit works through the word that's what the spirit does it works through the word of god his holy word it works through his power and it works through his deep conviction these works of the spirit are necessary because none of us i want you to listen again these works of the spirit are necessary because none of us can come to jesus on our own is that understood nothing can save us no other name above the name of Jesus Christ can save us. Jesus plainly says it, no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. You'll find that in John chapter 6, verse 65. Paul puts it this way, for who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. This, you will find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. So, in order to see the spiritual things of God, we require the Spirit of God. Very simple, right? But in the world, we think we can do everything on our own in order to reach God. But no, that's not what the word says. It says, in order to see the spiritual things of God, we require the Spirit of God. We require the Spirit of God. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, says the Lord. And you will find that in Isaiah 55, verse 9. We need the Spirit to draw us to God because only the Spirit fully knows the full will of God. There is another reason, however, that we need the Spirit to draw us to God. Want to know what it is? To me, it's scary. Why? Because we are hopelessly plunged in sin and are simply too broken by sin to come to God without his drawing power. Our purposes are selfish, our desires are disordered, and worst of all, our will is broken. Blinded by our own sin, we do not have sufficient power to draw ourselves to God. To quote Paul again, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is in the image of God. Wow. Who is the God of this age? And when I say God of this age, I'm talking about in lower uh, letter G, lowercase g. That's Satan, that's correct. He is impeding you, okay? He is blinding you 
those that have not actually believed or seen or heard of Christ, or those that do not believe in Christ, he has blinded you. So you cannot see the light of the gospel, which is the word of Christ, that shows you the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are like the GPS on our phones when the battery is dead. No matter how much we might think we can navigate our lives towards God, we don't have the power to do it. So God uses His Spirit to draw us to Him through Jesus. So, how does the Spirit do this? Using 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4 through 5 as a key passage, let's explore these ways that the Lord uses to lead us to Him, to lead us to Jesus Christ. The first and most important way is through the Word. The first way the Spirit draws us to God is through the Word of God. In the Old Testament, the Spirit gave physical strength, executive prow prowess, and engineering skills to various individuals, but He also gave them the very words of God. The Spirit has a rational function, that of communicating the specifics of God's will to humans. In the prophetic works of the Old Testament, the Spirit is frequently described as revealing the details of God's will. He inspired the prophets to communicate the exact message that God wanted to get across. Not the prophet's message, but God's exact words. He inspired the writing of the Bible. This is claimed by the Old Testament writers themselves. But the Spirit of God came even on him, and he walked alone prophesying. You'll find that in the first Samuel, chapter 19, verse 23. Then the Spirit of God came on Zechariah, son of Jobadiah. The priest, he stood before the people and said, This is what God says, 2 Chronicles 24, 20. My spirit who is on you will not depart from you and my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips. Blessed be the name of the word of Jesus Christ. And you will find that on Isaiah 59, verse 29, verse 21, correction, verse 21. Then the spirit of the Lord came on me and he told me to say, Ezekiel, 11 5 here you can see the spirit of the lord coming upon the prophets and telling them what to say to his people they made their hearts as hard as flint and will not listen to the law or to the words that the lord almighty has sent by his spirit through the earlier prophets you can read more about that in zechariah 712. The Old Testament writers were inspired by the Spirit of God to record the things they wrote. In the New Testament, the Spirit's inspiration of the Old Testament is explicitly maintained over and over again. Jesus affirmed the authority of the Old Testament, saying, for example, that not a single dot or line of the Old Testament should be broken. You'll find that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 20. The book of Acts declares that the Old Testament came by the Holy Spirit. You will find this in Acts 1, chapter 16, uh, and verse 4 through 25. Paul announces the law to be holy, righteous, and good. And you will find this in Romans 7, 12. In the same way Jesus promised the apostles that the priest would guide them in the truth that preserved 
that was preserved for us in the New Testament. You, you get to find a couple of these like in John 14, 6, John 15, 26, John 16, 13, and John 16, 15. Paul claims to have spoken the very word of God because as he explains, he has the spirit of God. You'll see that in 1 Corinthians 14, 37. Paul points out that God's word was or has now been revealed by the spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. You'll find that in Ephesians 3, 5. The scriptures are fully trustworthy because they are God breathed. A term that literally means spirited of God. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. The word of God is described as the spirit's sword. Ephesians 6 verse 17. Peter says that scripture came to us by the prophets who were moved by the Holy Spirit. And you will find that in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21. We do not come to God merely by looking deeply within ourselves. I need you to know that. We cannot come to Christ by seeking within ourselves, by doing meditation, or by doing yoga, or by doing any other acts, searching within ourselves to find God. We require specific instructions in order to follow Jesus. Without the word, we will not even know who Jesus is. This is why the functions of the Word of God and those of the Spirit are often described as the same language in Scripture. We have spoken a bit about how can we find Jesus. And the Word tells us that you will find Jesus among prophets, among apostles, speaking the true Word coming from Christ, the Son of God, God Himself, God made flesh and died on the cross so He can free us from sin. There is no longer sin upon us if we stray away from it and we cling to the foot of the cross and maintain ourselves purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's very simple to follow Jesus. I want you right where you're at. Make a mental note or say it out loud. Tonight, I want to speak to you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, tonight I need you to show me more of who Jesus Christ is. Holy Spirit, tonight I want you to give me the biggest revelations of my life. Give me the revelation of salvation that is through Jesus Christ. Show me how to read his word. Show me how to interpret his word. Show me how to develop a relationship with you, Holy Spirit. Show me how to develop that Holy Spirit, how to speak to you. Teach and train my ear to listen to your voice. For the word of the Lord says that the Holy Spirit lives within us. So if it lives within us, we can have access to it. But we must do it with a knowing and willing and repenting hearts of our sins before Christ. Because you know what sin does to us? Between our relationship, between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it shuts down the communication. It cuts the cable of the telephone. It blocks the airwaves of your cell phone. It puts a brick wall between you and the inner you. 
which is your Holy Spirit given to you by Christ, which is who you really are at the end, which is the only thing that really counts because it's the only thing that will survive you. Not only will it survive you, it will survive you for an eternity. So you need to know and have this relationship because you need to be freed from bondage. And when I say bondage, we mean bondage by the God of this age with a lowercase g to make the great difference between my God, which is an uppercase g, but I need you to develop your relationship with Jesus Christ. Start looking into the Holy Spirit to help you. That's why he was left behind. Christ never left us behind when he ascended to heaven. And when he did, he sent to the upper room, to those that were there, the power of God, which was the Holy Spirit. I thank you for spending this time with us and sharing the word of Christ. I pray that this is just the bare beginning of your understanding of where and how to look for Jesus. God loves you with all his heart. He wants none of them, meaning none of us, to perish. And when he means perish, not physically, because you not fear that who can kill the body, but you fear that who can kill the body and the spirit. Okay? Because your spirit is what needs to be alive. And it will only be alive if it is in constant communication and in presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Because the minute you make a decision for Christ or not, you have just changed the frequency to whom you are talking to. And when you are away from this earth and you go through the final judgment before God, I never want to hear God tell anyone Get away from me, for I do not know you. I never want to hear those words myself. That's why it's that urgent that we take this message to every single person that's listening right now. Because I want you to make your decision to live for Christ. You will not be wrong. You will not be wrong. Because upon that second coming of Christ, when the trumpet sounds, those that are dead in Christ will rise first, and then we that are alive will be brought up with him in heaven, caught up in heaven with him. I want you to be caught up in heaven. I want you to be part of the rapture of the church that God is coming to look back for. I want us to be changed to the likeness of Jesus Christ. I don't want to see nobody go to hell because that will be permanent and that cannot be changed. And since your spirit is eternal, and hell is damnation, burning, eternal fire, you will be in constant, eternal, oh, eternal pain. Why? Because you no longer will hear the voice of God. You will no longer have a communion with God. You will no longer have the word of God with you. 
But the most important thing, you will be devoid of the presence of our Creator. And there is nothing worse than being separated from our God. Once again, my name is Caesar, and I am a voice in the desert. God bless you all. Thank you for listening this message today. Remember you can find our messages on all major platforms such as iTunes Podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora, Deezer and many more places. You may also listen to us on our own podcast page www.avoiceinthedesert.net which contains our messages and additional materials for you to download. Remember you can also follow us on different social media platforms, such as, Facebook as A Voice in the Desert 2017 and on Twitter A Voice in the Desert. Our links are located on our podcast page for your convenience. Thank you from all of us at A Voice in the Desert. Be sure to join us next time. Please follow us on Facebook and subscribe via iTunes. Thank you for listening to today's episode 